Ben Rogers has got it going on. Ben Rogers explains it all with Mortensen Math. If you want straight A's, Ben's got it going on. Ben explains it all. I know. I used to be a moron. But then I listened to Ben and I learned math. And now I'm just kind of a moron. But now I get straight A's. Straight A's. Problem solving. All right, so let's discover what X is. Everyone always asks, well, that's great. We can do all this like as if it wasn't cool enough that we could do, <laughs> that we could do polynomial division that easily. Well, we want to know what X is. Well, if we want to know what X is, we need an equal sign. We need to set two expressions equal to each other. All right, we move into algebra. That scene three is algebra. Once again, when we're doing the Mortensen Mathematics in a classroom situation or tutoring with students, we spend a lot longer time developing these concepts. However, briefly, what I have here is a 10. And we can see here that on this side, we know how many it is. It's 10. Well, if I turn it on this side, it's smooth. We don't have the lines to let us know that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It could be anything. And using our imagination, this could be less than 1. It could be about 3 or 4. We don't know how many it is. Always changing, always varying. In mathematics, we call this a variable. And what are we going to name our variable? Well, we name our variable x. And any child can make an X. All right, now, this is an X. If I have an X and another X, I now have two X. Very simple to see. If I have X and Johnny has X, he has an X, I have an X, we put our X's together, we get 2x. Using the blocks, this is so visually obvious, it's redundant. Because what I have is 2 here and 2 here. Using the symbols, we just put a 2 in front of the x to tell us how many there are. Now, if I change my problem just slightly and add an x here, we can see that I have 2x and another x, and I just add one more x, and of course I have how many? Well, 3x. We're just counting the same kind. Really easy. 2x and another x, 3x. Now, this is also an X. And once again, for the sake of time, what shape is this? Well, it's a square. So let's call this X squared. Simple. X squared. How do we write that? And if you tell a child it's X squared, it's the same thing as telling them this is a table, this is a chair. They don't question. Older students and adults and teachers, well, why is that an X squared? Well, it's x this way, and it's x this way. And the way we write that is it's x two ways, x squared. Now, these are x's. And you can train the child very simply to saying x. We even have, even though it's plural and they want to say x's, it's still just 3x. They hear you say 3x, they'll say 3x. Now, I have x square x's, or x, I have three of them, 3x, and some units. And it's just two. So here's x square, 3x, and two. And we could use a three period lesson to develop these concepts so that we know what all the names of the blocks are when we have them on the smooth side. So when we flip it over, this is 100. But on the smooth side, this is x squared. Now, 
What I'm going to do is once again make a rectangle with x squared, 3x, and 2. And further, I'm going to give you even more information. I'm going to tell you what one of the sides are. Last time I gave you lots of information. I told you what the rectangle was and I told you one side. But what if we do this thing called factoring, where I'll only give you the rectangle, and I don't tell you what the sides are. I don't give you any more information than that. Just factor this. Well, factoring means form a rectangle and count the sides. So same thing, x squared, 3x, and we're going to pattern it just slightly differently, where the units wind up here, on top. Same rectangle, just moved it here. Now, can we describe this rectangle? Can we see that this is x plus 2 across? And it's x plus 1 up. Factored. Now, just like 18, when I had my 18, we don't count, we don't count this as 2x plus 2 or try to count in here. We just count the edges. When I had 18 and I was counting with my multiplication, I said, well, this side is 3 and that side is 6. I didn't try to count the inside. We just counted the edge. But if you're careful and you look at this, I know the dimensions of this are x plus 2. And if you look carefully, you can see that this is x plus 2. In fact, anywhere along this, it's x plus 2. And anywhere along this this way, it's x plus 1. Now, too easy, I know. It can't be that simple. Really, it is. And by the way, when you get that SAT or GMAT or GED test or whatever alphabet soup they give you, ACT, it doesn't say you can't draw boxes, lines, and dots. It says, here's three white sheets of paper. Good luck. And I know for a fact that this is very, very effective because I've had students come up to me and tell me that, you know, you came and did a demonstration in our classroom and I was failing. I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't getting them. And then I remembered I could go back and draw them. And I went back and drew them and I got an A because I drew every single one of them correctly and then all I had to do was make the symbols. Now, which brings us to the next step. Where can my children take these blocks to school with them? No, probably not. But then again, yes, they can, because where will they take the blocks? Let's do a bigger problem, because bigger is funner. Still x squared, but let's take 4x and 3. So let's see, I need to make sure I have the right pieces. I have x squared here, I have 3x, so I need another x. And for little kids, and I mean very little kids, who can easily do these problems, and it's fun, We're just making puzzles, they have to think, well, let's see, I need another x, and I need another unit, and there's a lot of learning that takes place there. All right, so I'm just going to factor this very quickly. And either way, you could do it. Put one on the side, rest on top. There's a little algorithm for you. Just put one on the side, rest on top. And once again, I have a rectangle, which means I've factored it. And again, I discount. Let's see, well, across here, I have x plus 1 and up. What do I have? Can you see it? I have x plus 3. No FOIL, no distributive theory of multiplication, just introducing the basic concept of factoring. And later on, we can say that the x times x is x squared, and then we have 3x and another x and 1 times. But for right now, just understanding what are we doing? We're making rectangles and we're counting the sides. Super easy and fun. Let's do another one. x squared, 5x, and 6. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
x squared, 5x, and 6. I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to count the sides. Well, let's see here. I have now 4x here and 3, so let's see. Once again, if I'm a small child, I need to make sure I've got the right pieces out. And I have, uh, let's see here. I have an x squared. I had a 10 slip in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I needed 2 more. And 6. Well, now I need... Okay, now I've got all my pieces together. Now, hmm, if I put one on the side and the rest on top, I'm going to find that I won't be able to fit all my pieces in. Hmm, I can only fit four in there. And we'll start learning about factoring and how numbers factor also. How about that? And now we can see I've built a rectangle and I had to make a space for these to fit in there. And my space needed to be two by three. See, all the numbers tell you about how to, and I'm not gonna tell you any rules or any algorithms. The children will figure these things out. The student will start figuring these things out. Ah, that means I have to break up my five into a certain way so that I can fit my six in there. Two and three is five. And we'll leave it at that. That needs a space for the green ones to fit in there is what the little kids say. And now I can count. It's x plus two this way. And if I count up, they're the same. What I'm saying is x squared plus 5x plus 6 is the same thing as x plus 2 taken x plus 3 times. Is that difficult? And of course, we're staying positive for the purposes of this short video. And now the next question becomes, well, what if I want to find out what x is? Because basically, we're just man manipulating these... Uh, expressions this quadratic into these two binomials multiplied by each other. So what if I want to know what x is? Well, let's tell a story and we'll uh, discover what x is. Okay, what I've built here, or what I've drawn here using symbols, is x squared 3x and 2 is inside of our rectangle and one side of the rectangle is x plus 2. Can you tell me what the other side is? Well, let's build it. This should look very familiar from the Boy Scout story that we told just a moment ago. Can we see here that this side is x plus 2? Couldn't call it 3 because this is an x and these are two units. Well, the other side then is x plus 1. It's visually obvious that if the whole rectangle is x squared, 3x, and 2, the other side must be x plus 1 must be. It can be nothing else. And suddenly this polynomial division is a breeze. Any child can do this. Once again, how high did we have to count? We counted one x and one unit to solve it. We had to count all the way to three, one, two, three, because we had to count all the blue ones. Never got off his hand. It's that easy. Really it is. Now, we could spend much more time with explanation on why this works and how it mirrors the symbols. But I think you can see that any young child can do this. Ben Rogers has got it going on. Ben Rogers explains it all with Mortensen math. If you want straight A's, Ben's got it going on. Ben explains it all. I know, I used to be a moron. But then I listened to Ben and I learned math. And now I'm just kind of a moron. But now I get straight A's, straight A's.